If you are suffering from port range on your DJI drone, you might be tempted to explore the gadget that is commonly known as a range extender. These offer to do exactly what they say on the tin and extend your range beyond where you would be able to fly if you wasn't actually using them. Now, opinion is pretty split when it comes to gadgets such as these, with many people suggesting they are an absolute must, with others saying they are nothing but snake oil and a complete waste of money. A recent poll I did on my channel suggested that a huge 75% of you either believe that they do not work or with an OcuSync drone, there is absolutely no point. But what I want to do on this video is finally put this entire topic to bed and show you one way or another whether these work or whether they don't. So let's get into it. Now before you switch off from this channel or start screaming at me, Gavin, what about visual line of sight? Yes, I agree with you, you should always fly your drone within visual line of sight at all times. But with many people recently commenting that they are losing signal at distances which would be considered well within visual line of sight, let's try to think of these gadgets not particularly as a range extender, but a signal booster. Because for me, I'm sure you would agree, safety is absolutely paramount. And when it comes to safety i think one of the safest aspects of flying a drone is making sure you are in control of it at all times there is nothing worse than losing control of your drone and leaving it to return to home in a built-up area where it could potentially crash into an obstacle or a hazard or indeed if you are flying out in a rural area if you did encounter for example the emergency services it's up to you as a drone operator to see and avoid and make sure you are completely out of the way that is absolutely no good if you have lost control of your drone and your drone is flying on its own during a return to home situation. So by the end of this video we're going to find out one way or another whether these are a complete bunch of rubbish but most certainly if they do work even when you are flying within visual line of sight distances why these could be a very good idea. Now I'm aware that many of you have actually tried range extenders in the past and found them to not actually work and I've got a really good theory as to why this is the case. Now if we take a look at the range extenders in more detail you can see there is a whole host of different ones. We have got parabolic reflectors, we've got Yagi antennas, we've got the Pariyagis which are a combination of the two but the most important thing to consider is the fact that we get two different types. So the ones with the longer bars are 2.4 gigahertz frequency and the one with the shorter bars are 5.8. So to demonstrate why you might not have had success with range extenders in the past, I'm going to do a little test flight with the DJI Mini 3 Pro. Now, if we open up our transmission tab, you will see we have got 2.4 gigahertz frequency, 5.8 or dual band. Now, traditionally, 2.4 gigahertz is designed for longer ranges in less congested areas. So basically where Wi-Fi connectivity is kept to a minimum, whereas 5.8 doesn't give quite the longer range as 2.4, but it repels interference that little bit better. So generally what you will find is, as you can see on this flight, this drone left in dual band, so where it can do its job with its OcuSync and flip between the two, it has determined that 5.8 is the least congested frequency and it has chosen to fly on that. However, here's the thing. Sometimes the drone can get it wrong. And if we are flying in a area which should be 5.8, for some bizarre reason, this drone has now decided to flick from 5.8 to 2.4, meaning we're not going to get a stronger signal because we should be flying on 5.8. And this is proven by me manually flicking that 5.8 gigahertz tab, and you can see an improvement in our signal. So this wholeheartedly proves that sometimes the technology, which is supposed to work in our favor, does doesn't always do that. So this is where you might have had the problem when it comes to range extenders such as these. Unless you match up this with the frequency with which you select in the DJI Fly app, you can potentially get a worse signal by using these. So in the scenario we've just seen, where the drone switched from 5.8 to 2.4 with no real reason, if you on top of that had a set of 5.8 gigahertz frequency, antennas on top of your controller this would result in getting a worse signal because of course these are tuned for a specific frequency and it'd be the same if you bought a set for 2.4 we need to make sure we are matching the frequency with which we are flying on to the antennas with which we are testing so because these are tuned for 5.8 and i'm flying in a high interference urban area we are going to fix 
on 5.8 and that's going to basically give us a stable platform to test whether these things actually work once and for all. So for this test I'm going to be using the DJI Mini 3 Pro and the RCM1 controller. The reason I'm using this controller is because I can clip on a set of antennas and the Mini 3 Pro because this is the drone most people complain about when it comes to a poor signal. So the test I have devised is a pretty simple one. I'm going to fix on the 5.8 gigahertz frequency. Once I get to a point where the signal actually drops, if it does, I'm going to then clip on my set of Yagi antennas if we receive a boost in signal then we know that they work without any question of a doubt. If we see no improvement at all we must certainly know that they are absolutely complete rubbish. So as we are flying out there is a couple of things to mention. We are going to make sure that we are pointing the controller at the drone at all times. This is paramount especially when we are using signal boosters because the way they work is by narrowing the signal concentrating it towards the drone to ensure we get a stronger signal. Also the theory goes. And the easiest way to tell we are pointing the controller efficiently at the drone at all times is by using this little compass indicator in the bottom left corner kind of supplied by DJI. When the dot goes green it shows that we are efficiently pointing the controller towards the drone. If we happen to move it away you will see that green disappear and it will go blue. If you don't already know that hopefully that's a nice little tip just to ensure you certainly do maximize your signal. So as you can see as we are flying along we have just encountered a patch where we have dropped signal and the bars are no longer full. What we're going to do is just simply what you can see me do it live is just clip the antenna onto the controller. So now that's clipped on let's take a look at our DJI Fly app and as you can see we do have a stronger signal. Our signal has now returned to that full white bars. So basically that's not good enough for me. I'm going to need to see a little bit more than that. So what we're then going to do is just take them off, which is equally the most difficult thing I've ever had to do uh, while trying to fly and hold the controller. Um, but now we've clipped them off. What we're going to do is just fly backwards and forwards to try and get that orange signal again that we just have. Now, as you can see, that has returned. So once again, what we'll do is we'll just clip on our antenna just to see if we get any improvement in signal. So once again, with this Yagi antenna, we have just seen once we've clipped it on, that has gone from orange bars back up to full white. Now, third time's a charm or so they tell me. So let's just whip these antennas back off the controller. And once again, we're just going to fly forwards and backwards. And as you can see, we've got that um, Ocusync doing what it needs to do. You can see it is flicking between different channels within the 5.8 gigahertz frequency, but it can't switch to 2.4 because we don't want to distort our results but either way flying backwards and forwards in this little area we are getting that orange drop of signal again live just clip the yagi antenna straight back onto our controller and as you can see we have got absolutely nothing we have got a full signal now we have added this yagi antenna so there we go, beyond any reasonable doubt, adding these to our controller improved our signal from orange to white, thus meaning that our flight was potentially safer because we had more control of our drone at all times. So please, of course, do not come at me with the whole visual line of sight thing. You could see that we started to get a power connection at much closer distances with which you are expecting. And of course, please don't look at these as a range extender. Try to look at them as a signal booster, which are useful in pretty much any single scenario. Now this video certainly isn't sponsored but these were particularly made by Start RC, so I will leave a link to them in the video description so you can go check them out on Amazon if you want to get a set but most importantly please do let me know your thoughts as to everything you've seen in this video and your overall opinions in the comment section below. If you have found this useful please do give it a big thumbs up it tells the YouTube algorithm that more people just like you might like to watch this video and most importantly if you're not already please do hit that subscribe button if you're awesome and until next time thank you very much for watching see you again soon